From the shores of Puget Sound, this is Greener Views, a unique media resource for information, education, consultation, and fun. Greener Views is a part of the Healthy Homecast Network and is brought to you exclusively by HealthyPainting.com and AmbrosiaDigitalMedia.com. Each episode will introduce and connect you with services, products, practices, organizations, and groups that focus on the health, happiness, safety, well-being, charity, and community of all. Find us on the web at www.greenerviews.net. And now, your host, Daryl Whalen. Okay. Hello, and welcome to episode 31 of Greener Views. I'm Daryl Whalen with audio engineer Randy Parcell and video engineer Michael Schwartz, adjusting the camera over there. Joining us this evening is Eileen Gagney from the American Lung Association. Is that correct? It's correct. That's correct. Green Reviews is a part of the Healthy Homecast Network and is brought to you exclusively by HealthyPainting.com and AmbrosiaDigitalMedia.com. Welcome to the show, Eileen. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So I, I wanted to start here by asking you to give us a brief introduction about uh, mm. of the the American Lung Association on a national level. Okay. How did how did the uh, who and when and who started it and what was the reason at the time and how's it changed and oh, what boy. is their big purpose? All right. So today? It, it was started over a hundred years ago, and to fight tuberculosis mm. because that was one a debilitating disease that was affecting millions and millions of people and they had no idea what was it you probably remember about the uh, tuberculosis as asylums and stuff that all were in arizona and the dry states and they didn't know what was going on so started out to fight that and then eventually just became the american lung association to fight all the diseases of the lungs so mm -hmm. not only tuberculosis but asthma copd emphysema sarcus, all the lung diseases which lung there cancer. are like, lung cancer yeah. everything so in, in Washington, it's actually the oldest nonprofit in the state. We were started in 1906. So uh, who, yeah, so, so 1906, mm -hmm. and what year was it that the other one? The, the the, was... That was, it was even before that. I yeah. think it was in the late 1800s. But yeah, we've been around a long time. So how's it changed, and what's the main role of the American Lung Association today? Well, now we're, we fight for air. So we fight for good air. We fight for, we're the ones who got uh, smoking banned in public places. Oh, yes. You bastards. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Just... Yes, we like that. Yeah. And we do things like we, uh, we fight for the Clean Air Act, mm. reducing ozone levels, pollution outside. But my baby is indoor air quality. Mm. So, and according to the EPA, our indoor air can be five times as polluted as our outdoor air, and we spend 90% of our time indoors now. Yeah. Scary. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah, and yeah. I think most of it has to do with this little thing called the computer, you know, because kids, if they're not computer savvy by the time they hit kindergarten, they're behind. Yeah. And we put them having games. When I was growing up, I was outside. Yeah. I was building tree houses, beating up yeah. boys, you know. Even in the winter. Yeah, and everything. you're yeah. always outside. Yeah. Not now. Yeah. <laughs> you're inside. Go play in traffic. Not, <laughs> not on the computer. Different kind of traffic. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> Internet traffic. Mm -hmm. um, so what is your uh, posi position title and your specific roles and responsibilities with the organization? So I am the Environmental and Lung Health Program Manager at the Lung Association. And what I, my, my main job is to, as the, as the director of the Master Home Environmentalist Program. So the Master Home Environmentalist Program has been around since 1992. And what we do is we go into people's homes and help them identify anything in their homes that can be making them sick. Anything from lead to asbestos to household chemicals to uh, anything, anything and everything. And then we work with residents to come up with three low-cost or no-cost things that they can do in their homes to make it healthier. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the best things you can do for the health of your home, but not, besides not smoking in it, and of course you don't smoke, so nobody smokes anymore. Of course they do, but they, we're, we're not going to admit that. <laughs> okay. Nobody here does, <laughs> nobody though. Smoke, I know okay. that. Is to take your shoes off at the door. So... That is a great habit that we have gotten. We're getting more inclined to in this country. It's a beautiful habit to get into. Um, so uh, let's see. How did you get involved in all this? Uh, so let's see. About 
I'm my my background is this. I'm an ar- former architect, general contractor, home inspector, mm. and at about almost 30 years ago, I was renovating an old farmhouse in Vermont in the middle of the winter, and I was applying applying polyurethane yeah. to some woodwork. In the middle of the winter, with the windows open and a heater going, I slept for <laughs> 60, 16 hours and didn't hear a chainsaw in my front yard. I got made so sick from uh. it that now I have multiple chemical sensitivities. So any exposure to, around, if I'm around cigarette smoke, perfumes, new carpeting, new paint, my throat closes and I get a migraine. So I do this work to protect, prevent everybody else from getting as sick as I become. So... That's, and I started about 10, 11, 12 years ago. I took the Master Home Environmentalist training, of which you took, and took it, loved it, fell in love with it, did a whole bunch of home assessments. And then the manager at the, of this program at the time didn't want to do trainings. And it's a big component of this program is to do trainings. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the volunteer coordinator at the time asked me to come in and asked me to do the trainings, and I did. And then she left, and I just sort of fell into the position. So I've been here for almost 11 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, the training is a real art. <laughs> Thank you. I talked about it last week. Maybe I'll touch on it real briefly. Um, I guess it was about four years ago when I changed my uh, company to Healthy Painting. From mm-hmm. I'd been a house painter for since uh, 1978. Right. And living out in Seattle for the last 10 years, I, I realized that... Uh, you know, I'd, I'd been uh, subtly bombarded by stuff and realized that I really have to make a big change. And uh, uh, I had a, a, a friend of mine, Dave, at the time, was a real big supporter and a motivator. In fact, we drove right to uh, Best Paint. And uh, it was a company that's not even around anymore. But uh, I really needed to know what to do. And I uh, had talked to a few people. And I, I'd say that I opened up the phone book, but I actually was on the computer. And uh, I... Uh, had started looking for parks and recreations and just anything to do with environmental. I didn't even know what I was looking for. And somehow I found uh, somebody had mentioned uh, the American Lung Association. That's like, duh. I mean, why did I think of that? But I ended up talking to Eileen and uh, I had found out that she was going to be speaking at the uh, Green Festival. I think that was like three or four years ago. Mm-hmm. And I went down there, and I was automatically blown away. <laughs> so you're talking about the training and stuff. And she talked for an entire hour straight, and it was the most informative. And uh, it was exciting and really scary at the same time, <laughs> the information that she was giving off. It was all about the indoor health and the, the carpeting. And mm-hmm. and uh, then I went to the uh, – then, I don't know, I believe it might have been you talked about the uh, – the National Healthy Home Training at the mm-hmm. University of Washington, which you happen to be uh, a trainer for. You were a trainer right. for that with the guy uh, who Chuck Tresser. Chuck, who was from the Midwest, where I'm yeah. from, yeah. and uh, and uh, Doug, mm-hmm. Doug, and uh, John Alexander were there, and uh, we just it just it's just been going and going and going, <laughs> and we had uh, Gretchen and uh, Bob Angeline from the from the state on last week. So yeah, it's I I think that. Uh, and, oh, yeah, so we met uh, Denise Frakes, who's going to uh-huh. be coming on the show in uh, sometime in June or July. And uh, she was, like, in the same place with her business, had been doing it for almost, I think, 20 I, years, and her and her husband, uh, floor cleaning and tile cleaning and everything. And and uh, I'd met her at some of, like, several of the trainings and everything now, so it's just been really, really it's it sucks that we have to do this kind of work, <laughs> but it has to be get done. And it's, it's good work. It's uh, I think my thing was that I was initially I was saying that there's so much of it going on here <laughs> in Seattle that uh, it's it's really really excited yeah. to be a, just a really a part of the big circle, and that ultimately led to this podcast. It's great. That's great. That's great. But there's still so much more work to be done. <sighs> I mean, if you look at I was talking to, to Denise as well a couple weeks ago, and she was like. Even at some of our local grocery stores, big national Mm. brands, they have 60 feet of household chemicals, 60 feet long by, you know, 10 feet tall that, you know, and the chemical companies have amazing marketing, (laughs) you know, and if your house doesn't smell like pine saw or quote unquote, or quote unquote Lysol or doesn't smell like pine or bleach, it's not clean. It's not true. (laughs) Those things can hurt us. 
And then, yeah, and it's also the free market economy that makes that six, how many feet did you say? Oh, it was? it's 60 six, five, feet? six feet tall by, you know, 30, 40, rows. 50 yeah. rows, 60 yeah. feet. Yeah, aisles. Aisles. And, uh, yeah, and then there yeah. was the ones that say, like, natural and stuff yeah. on there. Yeah. We know how, like, yeah. that's actually could very well be, like, the, the opposite of. And, yeah, I could yeah. say a brand in particular, but <laughs> I probably shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, so I know that you're a passionate person. What are yeah. what are you most passionate about as it relates to all of this work and all the stuff that we're talking about right now? I think, uh, well, certainly educating and training people about mm. this work. But certainly for me, it's getting young mothers and children, because I got a call. Well, for example, I got a call about mm, probably two months ago from a grandmother, whose son, her her grandson was born lead poisoned. So what had happened, the, the mother mm. got pregnant, and they immediately started restoring the bedroom. Oh so the mom got inhaled all this lead dust, all this lead paint chips. She, the kid was born with 40 micrograms per deciliter of lead in its blood. Now, for an adult, that's a lot. For a baby, it's huge. So for children, they, you know, the placenta offers no protection. So whatever the mother in jail inhales and ingests mm. and breathes in, it goes directly to the baby, to the fetus. Yeah. Now, and when a baby, if you've ever seen a baby breathe, their, their lungs move like this. It's amazing how much, how fast they breathe. Yeah. And you know, kids are eating all the time. And they're so delicate. Their lungs are like tissue paper. They're, the they're just amazing. Yeah. And they're not small adults. They can breathe. A, a normal adult will take 10,000 breaths in a day, a baby 30,000. Wow. So they are three times more uh, susceptible to the effects of the pollution because they're getting three times more. Wow. And because their lungs are so small, so the particles that will pass by ours and, you know, our, our nose hairs and everything else will collect them can go directly into, into the way down deep into the lungs and cross directly into the bloodstream. And those particles can, can carry a whole bunch of carcinogens yeah. with them. So it's, it's not just the particles, but it's also, you know, the stuff that comes with them. So I have a good colleague, Harriet Amon. Oh, you would love to have her yeah, here I, sometime. Yeah, I've asked her. I mean, she's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and she gave me a great statistic that I love to, love to tell people. So one gram of diesel soot. So that's an equal packet. You know, that's one gram, yeah, right? Okay. And you know how much, how much square footage one gram of, of lead paint dust will contaminate, right? You remember how many square feet? I don't remember the number. 20,000 square feet. Okay, 20,000. So yeah, one gram of, of equal. Yeah. 20,000 wow. square foot. Now, one gram of diesel soot has the surface area of 90 square meters. Wow. So you think about it. You've got one particle and you cut it in half and you've got more surface area. Cut that in half, cut that in half, cut that in half. You get all the surface area that and all of these toxins can absorb, can attach to. That's the stuff that by and then when they get that small, they bypass our nose hairs, they bypass our cilia in our in our lungs, and they go way down deep, yeah. where they cross right into the blood. That's why I think cancer rates are on the rise, asthma rates are on the rise. Everybody I know knows somebody with cancer. Yeah. And childhood cancer rates are about ten times what they used to be in like the seventies. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing what's going on. So it's not just what we breathe, but it's also what we eat. So pesticides, insecticides, you know, I eat mostly organic and I yeah. totally support that endeavor for everybody, especially for yeah. pregnant women, children and young adults. Mm. So, yeah, so you're right. I am passionate. <laughs> so what about like, uh, so, so you were talking about the multiple chemical sensitivity mm -hmm. and the stuff that you're talking about now with the cancers and stuff. And mm -hmm. what about the people that say, no, nah, this stuff is all, none of this is true. The science is there to back it up. Yeah. You know, right now, for the first time this year, after 30 years of scientific reviewing by different companies and things, formaldehyde was just declared a human carcinogen. Now, we've known it is a, car a possible carcinogen. Decades. For, for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you pickle something in, a f in, in like frogs in high school. The, the pickle stuff, you know, that we had, that we, you know, that, that the frogs were, that we, when we dissected that was them. Formaldehyde. That's formaldehyde. Yeah, yeah. They put it in everything. They yeah. put it in our furniture, in this, in this stuff, in the carpeting. They put it in mascara. It's a preservative and it's incredibly cheap. Yeah. So they do, and they can, because there's not the regulatory agencies to pr protect us from that. 
So, you know, the, base, the bottom line is, and I don't mean to scare anybody, but is to really think about reducing your exposures to everything, keeping things yeah. as simple as possible. So I have one saying that's, you know, like, if it smells bad, it's probably bad. And if it smells good, it's probably bad. Okay? <laughs> so, like, plug-in air fresheners, do you really think there's any vanilla in those things? Uh, yeah. There's no vanilla in there, okay? It's a petroleum solvent. Yeah. It's one <laughs> vanilla stick in every container. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> yeah and i think that unless somebody like is personally affected or knows somebody mm -hmm. that has some of these mm -hmm. challenges and some of this stuff they're going to be a lot more of a naysayer and stuff or they're just you know we're we're fed all this information from commercials that yeah. say in order to be sexy you have to smell like this i mean look at, look at the auto ads do you think those sexy yeah. women are what are they selling there the car or the yeah. women okay the same with perfumes i mean it yeah. is a billion dollar a year industry yeah you know and yeah, i want to smell like jennifer lopez yeah, Woo! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll buy that uh, perfume because I, I want to look like that model. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's it's something. Yeah. So let's let's talk about uh, let's get more into uh, some of the stuff we've touched on, but I know okay. that we can really get into this. Um, uh, let's get a little bit more into uh, indoor air quality, ah. which I know is your it's your baby, so it to is. speak. And uh, it is. Uh, and the, I and I know by the way, these are pretty uh, vague questions, and there's okay. a lot of answers, but. Uh, what don't people know about indoor air quality? I don't think they realize how toxic their indoor air quality can mm. be. I think that especially here in Seattle or in Western Washington, excuse me, we have an ama we, you know we have really wet winters, and I probably get thirty to forty calls a week about mold, and it's amazing. And the things I've seen is amazing. Yeah. I mean, I have seen mold growing behind beds, under beds, in closets on their clothes um and you know people they don't know when they see mold they think toxic black mold well if you got molds you got too much moisture yeah. mold is a symptom yeah. of too much moisture yeah and here it's a real issue for us yeah we got moisture in seattle yeah yeah, yeah i think just a little <laughs> bit okay we got slugs the size of montana yeah okay so <laughs> so what you want to do particularly for 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 moisture in washington is you gotta really watch your moisture producing activities. All right, so you've got to cover your pots while you're cooking. You got to, you, hopefully your bathroom has a fan. Hopefully, hopefully it works right. Hopefully it's not noisy and yeah. hopefully it has a 60 minute timer. Now those are a lot of variables, which yeah. a lot of rentals don't even come close to having. Yeah. Okay, but if you have a window, open it. But you know what happens in the winter when you open the window, the cold air comes in. So you're not getting that hot, moist air out. Use your fans. It takes 45 minutes to get the moisture off the wall after you're done showering. You've got to use your fans. You've mm. got to ventilate. Everybody, when they come home at the end of the day, should open a window in each room and then go close a window. Yeah. Flush the house out. We have all sorts of products that we buy. We buy Sharpies and whiteboard erasers and particle board furniture and, you know, new carpets and new padding and paints and all the stuff that off gases all these chemicals. We got to air it out. The f fresh air is really good. Whenever you can, open your windows. Except, I'll, I'll put a caveat with that. If you live over a bus line, <laughs> you might think about not doing that. Okay, You want to be selective how you do that. Yeah, it's amazing. Being a painting contractor, I go in and look at people's uh, bathrooms, and yeah. I see mold like pretty much, mm -hmm. you know, two out of three times. Yep. And yep. it's amazing when you tell people uh, that do have fans, how often do you run them? Right. Uh, they're, they're shocked. Yeah, yeah. And telling people about the windows and stuff. So, yeah, it's really, really mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. It's a real simple it's a real, there's actually some pretty simple solutions. There are, but not only running the fan, but they can also squeegee the walls off. Yeah. So it actually gets the moisture down so it doesn't hang out as much. Um, leaving your shower curtain open so that the air gets in there to dry it out rather than closing it. You can always wash your shower curtain. Yeah. It's a lot easier to wash that than to scrub down the mold. And never, ever use bleach on mold. Bleach does not kill the mold. It bleaches it. Just like if I got bleach on this blue sweater, yeah. it would turn it white. 
That's all it does to the mold. It would still be a sweater. It'd still be a sweater. It'd still mold. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yep. So, uh, so what are some other ideas on ways we can uh, improve indoor air quality? Think about the products that you bring into home. Yeah. So think about, you know, do you really need that Sharpie? You know, it's solvent-based. Anything that smells that bad is not good for you. Mm. All right. Even, even the, so there are Sharpies, even such things, such benign things as you would think as the markers that smell like watermelon. Yeah. Do you think there's any watermelon in there? <laughs> You're teaching your kids how to huff. Yeah. It's not a good thing. <laughs> okay. So think, you know, also if you take things to a dry cleaner, there are alternative alternative dry cleaners now that are much safer than the traditional that use perchloroethylene. Perchloroethylene is a known carcinogen, and I know that the other dry cleaning companies, the, the greener ones, quote-unquote greener, and I'm using quotes very yeah. selectively around that. <laughs> Loosely, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, the, you know, perchloroethylene, if you take your things to them and you bring it home, you got to take your clothes out of the plastic and air them for three hours outside. Because mm. you do not want to be, first of all, if you leave them in that plastic, that, that the, the chemicals are not getting anywhere, but getting more embedded into the yeah. product, <laughs> into the fabric. So get them outside, air them out. Think about, and as I said when I when we first started this, one of the best things you can do for the health of your home is take your shoes off at the door. And the reason why I say that is that outside we step in pesticides, insecticides, arsenic from the Tacoma smelter, lead from lead paint and yeah. leaded gasoline. And outside the pesticides and insecticides are broken down by the sun and the rain. Inside they're not. And where do we put little babies? On the ground. On the carpet. <laughs> so put a sheet down. You know, protect the babies. Protect those are our future. that's our future right there. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that how you toughened up your kids in the old days? You just <laughs> let them lick the floor? I just uh, smacked them around a little bit. <laughs> if, if they could make through a little bit of floor but, licking, you but know they're going to be what? big and strong. Back then, yeah. there, was, there weren't the chemicals that we have now. Yeah, of course, was, there was DDT and there was lead. So yeah, I grew up, I was born in 55. Yeah. So yeah, I was lead poisoned because I was a thumb sucker. Yeah, yeah, Might yeah. explain some things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but you know they did. St they were still using DDT. Yeah. I have colleagues that remember running behind the trucks in New Jersey as they were spraying DDT uh, yeah. for mosquitoes. Yeah, we did that in Ohio. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. it might explain some things that too. Explain, yeah, well, it explains a lot. <laughs> um, They're still finding DDT in house dust, and it was banned in the 70s. So besides not taking your shoes off, damp dusting regularly, and vacuuming not sweeping yeah so you don't want to make the stuff airborne dust is incredibly hazardous so those microfiber cloths are really good damp dusting is really great really good furnace filters yeah and you want to have the right kinds of vacuum cleaners all right vacuum <laughs> and your vacuum cleaners you've got to service them every year they're like a car yeah you know it's it's a huge it's a really great machine for getting toxins out of your home yeah but you gotta make sure that the belt is changed it's nice and tight that you empty the bag, change the bag, no bagless vacuums, thank yeah. you very much. Okay, change the bag when it's half full, and you have it serviced every year. It's a, it's a critical component of your house cleaning. Yeah. You know? I've seen people with, like, wet, moldy, uh, oh. wet, moldy, like, vacuum cleaners that they, yeah. like, they plug it in and they vacuum. For some reason, it would suck something up, but <laughs> what it was doing, the detrimental effect yeah. that it had was probably a lot worse than a little bit oh, of yeah. granules on yeah. the ground. I did an assessment of a library in Seattle, and they had dust bunnies the size of Montana underneath some of the um, some, yeah. some of the shelves. And I said, let me take a look at this vacuum. The vacuum bag was so full, it sounded like that when I hit it. I'm like, it can't possibly yeah. be picking up anything. Yeah. They shut the library down after my little assessment. Sorry. <laughs> I got a call from HR, and they were not real happy. I'm like, you people are complaining. Oh, I know. Yeah. One of the biggest reasons they did was that in the basement, they had the baby's reading room. Well, the baby's reading room had carpet on it. What do you think it smelled like? They put the babies on the carpet with yeah. wet diapers. It reeked of urine. Yeah. And poop. <laughs> well, we had the class that you guys put on last year. Uh, Tom and I, the guy that I paint with, uh -huh. uh, we took it and uh, we had Dan Morris on uh, mm -hmm. last year. And uh, what a beautiful man he is. Yeah. And he's, he's retired yep. and doesn't want to come back on. But, uh, <laughs> man, his stories about, uh, uh, what was it, the Opera House? or? Uh, He's got some great stories. Yeah. Was that the Opera House in Seattle yeah. or the, yeah, yeah wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, people don't realize, you know, 
because when we have buildings, we have mechanical systems. Buildings have got to breathe. Yeah. And the mechanical systems, whether it's your furnace or your filtration system, they need to be serviced and they need to be engineered so that everything works properly. Yeah. And if they're not, you end up with sick building syndrome, which of course it was a lot what he dealt with back then. But that's what we deal. I deal with almost every day in homes. Yeah. It's not we can have healthy homes and buildings. It's just. You know, if you leave a, a vacuum cleaner go till it's like rock hard, then you know <laughs> you're not doing yeah, much. Yeah, work. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not being very clean. Um, so let's talk. So we had Casey. Let's see. So we started uh, when we were Healthy Homecast. Uh, yeah, I don't even know really to actually think about it. It's been officially a little over a year or so since we did our first podcast, and now here's episode 31. But uh, Casey was on. Uh-huh. Right there in the beginning, and yep. we were talking about the Master Home uh, Environmentalist Program, and you talked about it a little bit earlier. Uh, why don't you give a quick overview on that, but more yep. so, why don't you let us know about the current status of the program? Well, we've certainly had some challenges, like other most most programs and situations right now. So um, last year, I had Kate, I had myself full time and Casey part time, twenty two hours a week, and I had three full time AmeriCorps members. Well, we didn't get those people this year, mm. so Casey and I are doing our work as well as three full-time members. Needless to say, I'm a little busy. <laughs> I did eight home assessments in one week a couple weeks ago. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, so um, I have an intern working with us. We have. I'm now working with ECOS, which is the Environmental Coalition of South Seattle. They have contractors that that speak 18 different languages. Wow. And I've contracted with them for people who speak five different languages and I'm going to do a home assessment in their homes and then they're going to arrange within their own wow, community. that's really cool. Yes, that's so I can get in and do Do you know that. Elizabeth that works down that's there? That's who I'm working with. Oh, right. sweet. That, yeah. Yep, Elizabeth Loudon. Yeah, she's a, she's a friend. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's really cool. So, and you know, so we're still doing our work. We, 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 because we are so limited in our staffing right now, we have, we're focusing just solely on the city of Seattle. We don't do any homes, home evaluations in the rest of King County right now. Yeah. We just can't afford the time devoted to take care of the volunteers and volunteer recruitment and checking in on them and all. In fact, we, we usually do two volunteer trainings a year, and we've had to stop that this year as well. Yeah, wow. It's, it's a challenge. Yeah, it was one of the questions I had was I was going to ask you how – how what kind of effect that the change in the economy uh, has one. had on all these programs? I, so, it, with the yeah. Lung Association, ever since nine eleven, and I think with most nonprofits, donations have been really hit hard. Yeah. And then so it was nine eleven. Then we hit the recession. Yeah. And you know, if you're looking at you know trying to put money on food on the table and pay your rent, you yeah. know, you don't have a whole lot of you know exchange to be able to go out and help. So, um, but there are other ways that people can help. I mean, they, we have an asthma walk coming up on May 6th. You can walk, you can, you know, do whatever. There's lots of ways that you can help other I know they have like a run across or a bicycle thing across the We have state so many there. different, we have, that's the big ride across, across America. It actually rides for six weeks. You ride from Seattle to Washington, D.C. Wow. And people that I have talked to who, Michael's who gonna take it. Michael's going to do that. <laughs> no, actually, Randy's going to do that. That's right. People I've talked to, it's life-changing. Yeah. It's just <laughs> life-changing. So. In a lot of different ways. If you but make it, so yeah. Everybody makes it. Unless, unless unfor- uh, you know, knock on wood, there's yeah. some sort of unfortunate accident, yeah. which their gender tends not to be. Yeah, yeah. So there's that when there's reached the beach down in Portland that goes from Portland to the coast. Yeah, we've talked about it on mm-hmm. the show before. That's really cool. And then yeah. uh, around, we have a new one, which is Race Around the Sound, which is uh, instead of doing the... That wasn't what the, I was talking about, the Race Around the yep, Sound. it's called yeah. Rat. Rat. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, you know, and there's, there's three different legs. You can do the full thing, one a third or two yeah, thirds. Yeah. And it goes from Seattle around Bremerton and up around to Port Townsend and back again. It would be beautiful. Yeah, it's and that's going to happen this summer. And as I said, May, on May sixth, we have the asthma walk, and you know, yeah. So there's lots of lots of ways to participate. How about um, what type of uh, relationship do you have, uh, or partnership do you or don't you have with, uh, like, say, Oregon? <laughs> well, now the American Lung Association of the Mountain Pacific is seven states. Wow. So we are Alaska, Hawaii, Oregon, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. Washington. Wow. It's a huge territory. And I can't even imagine being a CEO and trying to blend. Where's home base for all that? In Seattle. Oh, the one here? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, wow. yeah. Our CEO is here in Seattle. Oh, okay. I didn't know that that was so, yeah, okay. Wow. It's, it's very interesting. <laughs> 
So, uh, let's see. So, I think, uh, did you have anything else that you wanted to touch on about, uh, well, let's go into a little uh, broader uh, uh, look at the uh, household chemicals and stuff. Okay. We talked about uh, uh, some of the cleaning supplies, mm -hmm. and we talked about some of the uh, quote-unquote air fresheners. <laughs> Uh, let's let's talk a little bit more about household chemicals okay, and, so, and the processes of cleaning. So really you could just go to our website and you can download a green cleaning recipe brochure. Yeah. And basically all you need is vinegar and baking soda to clean with. A spray bottle, a scrubby, and you're good to go. Yeah. That's it. You don't need anything more. People are like, well, what about, I, I need to bleach my toilet. I'm like, what are you trying to kill? And they're like, well, you know, and I'm like, well, the problem is the next time you use it, it's dirty again, right? Yeah. So scrubbing. So it's like when you wash your hands, you got to use soap and water, and you got to scrub. You got to yeah. rub for twenty seconds. That's far more effective than any kind of Purell that you can yeah. ever use. We don't recommend ever using antibacterial soaps or cleansers or anything because what's happened is that we've made with, with all the pesticides that we've used and antibacterials, yeah. basically a pesticide. We've made super germs that are no longer responsive to antibiotics. That's why yeah. they, your doctor does not give you antibiotics as, as frequently as you used to get them. Because if you have an emergency, they want to be able to, you have something that will work. Yeah. So there's that. There's like no dryer sheets. Dryer sheets are awful. So what they do is not only don't, do they make your towels less absorbent, hmm. they, they actually coat your clothes with a fine layer of scent that you're also breathing all day, and you think once again that that scent is natural? <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. And they also contain phthalates, which are known <clears throat> endocrine disruptors. So endocrine disruptors are the kind of things that can make, that can result in like little boys' testicles not dropping or bringing on the early onset of puberty for little girls. Um, and that's a big problem. It's in a the huge world problem. Because uh, hasn't puberty for like women and stuff gone down. like. <laughs> yeah. Like by years. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. it's re it's getting younger and younger and younger. Yeah. And part of it is the chemicals that we put in there. Chem the chemicals that we use. Yeah. It's also the chemicals that they put in food, but it's also things that they line our food containers with. There's a whole range of chemicals that we really don't know what they do with us. So <laughs> we have the to we have Tosca, which is the to to Toxic Substance Control Act, mm. and it when it was imp implemented about. I think with 3% were grandfathered in, and we really don't know what these chemicals do to us. And we don't, not only don't we know what they do, but not only don't we, don't, when they work with, in, in conjunction with another chemical. So we are actually the guinea pigs of the chemical companies right now, because hmm. they can, they can, there's no regulation on it. They can do it. And they do do it because they can. So why not? So here's a, here's a good thing. So, so not a good thing, but so when I was growing up, my father was a smoker. I had chronic bronchitis and inner ear infections the entire time because of exposure to secondhand smoke. And one night I woke up and the whole house was filled with smoke because he had fallen asleep with a cigarette in bed. Yeah. Well, so instead of getting the guys, people not to smoke in bed, they put flame retardants in the bed. Yeah. Okay. So all of our fabric now, most of it has flame retardants in it. The computers do, all this kind of just stuff. Well, they're finding flame retardants in breast milk. Somehow, I don't think flame retardants belong yeah. in breast milk. Well, the babies won't catch on fire, though. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the same with Teflon. They, yeah, they're finding that's... Teflon in breast milk, and yeah. I don't think it belongs there either. You know, when yeah. you scrape a little bit off that pan, you eat it. Yeah. You know, and it's in a lot of different things. Oh, and also, there's a local car company <sighs> now that can put, you can actually have them Teflon your car so the dirt doesn't stick on it so badly. Yeah. I'm like, really? So what is Teflon? Uh, it's, uh, it's a bit, I, I'd have to go back and yeah. actually it's a, it's a. Some really intense chemical. No, it's, 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 a, it, I, what, I can't even remember how they came across with it. They were developing something else and came yeah. up. It's an amazing thing. It's just one of those things that, you know, yeah. I use cast iron. <laughs> it's, it's an amazing thing, but it doesn't mean that it's a good thing. Right, it's just a, right. And, yeah. you know, there are some really great uses for these products. I just, you know, and. And I just don't think they should be in everything we use or everything that we eat or handle or whatever. So let's talk a little bit about dust. What oh. was so the original? Per, from what I understand, uh, the person that started the master must. I don't mm -hmm. know if he started it. Doctor Dust. Doctor Dust. Dr. John Dr. Roberts. So in, in a in a 
a remembrance of uh, Dr. <laughs> Dust. Why don't you tell us what exactly is dust and what's in it, and uh, what uh, are some of the problems that it creates? So dust, he he discovered. So, <clears throat> oh, for example. So Doc John Roberts was great, he, and his nickname was Dr. Dust, and he really <laughs> believed that dust was the bane of all mankind <laughs> in, in some way. I was cleaning my dust out before you guys oh, yeah. today because I knew. <laughs> She's going to look at it. I, I <laughs> so anyway, um, one of the things he, do, he did was he measured the dust in his daughter's carpeting mm. and with his granddaughter there and found huge levels of lead in it. So lead, as you know, is heavy. It's a heavy metal. Yeah. And it's on a lot of our windows and a lot of our doors. And every time you open and close a window, you generate a little bit of lead dust. Because it's heavy, it settles on the windowsill or below the window. Well, kids come up and they mm. chew on the windowsill. And they actually think lead is what actually caused the, the downfall of the Roman Empire. Yeah, we talked about that last Did time. Did you? Because yeah, of the yeah. lead, the lead pipes. And, and they put, everything was made out of lead. Yeah, like and they that. put lead in the wine because yeah. it was sweet and, you know, hello. So... <laughs> <laughs> in fact, the, the farmhouse I had in Vermont, yeah. it, you know, when I remodeled it starting in the 70s, it had lead-based pipe in it. It still had it. There are a lot of farmhouses in Vermont that still have lead-based pipe. A friend of mine back in Cleveland, I didn't tell this story last time, uh, <laughs> he got a house from his, like, grandmother or something, uh -huh. <laughs> and it was, like, so back in, as a painter, you know, this stuff is always kind of interesting to me, but back in, like, the... <laughs> Like before, before any of us were around, mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't really very many choices for paint. You know, no. it was like yellow, green, red, and right. whatever the primary. Yep. It was called the primary colors. Yeah. Well, he got a house from his like grandmother that, and where uh, most of the houses were well over a hundred some years old, but they had like hardcore lead paint, and it was on like the whole second floor of the house. All the the rooms were painted, and they looked like they were like. Just painted. Brand new. And they were fit. It was 50 yeah. years since the last paint job. Oh, yeah. Lead yeah. paint was great. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. great stuff. Hardcore. Oh, really good stuff. Yeah. So the lead dust, let me go back to that. So what he discovered was, and, and as a volunteer, you took one of the vacuums home, right? No, they didn't have the vacuums at the time. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so what we do is we actually um, got uh, two really good vacuums from a local vacuum supply place. And what we do is we have the volunteers vacuum a three foot by three foot area and then we measure how long it takes before the green light comes on yeah okay excuse me and when i did it when at my house i have a 1916 house and i didn't know all about this all this yeah. stuff this has been a huge learning curve for me yeah and so i vacuumed it you know three foot by three. it took me 45 minutes to get the green light on yeah that, that indicates it's clean that well uh, right right yeah, 45 but it took me minutes. 45 minutes to get yeah. a three foot by three foot and i've area. been in your house it seems pretty clean well to me. now it is <laughs> okay so <laughs> okay. so and the people i bought the front house from didn't take their shoes off and uh, i didn't take my shoes off uh, i take my shoes off now yeah. okay so and that the and i came back when we send the dust out, we sieve it, and we send it out to an EPA certified lab, and they measure the lead in it. Yeah. So that came back with 446, so 464 micrograms per, per square meter of lead in it. I spent the whole next weekend vacuuming the yeah. whole entire house, so it took me all two days I to vacuum I just assume it. that's bad, that yeah. micrograms or uh, whatever. It's bad. That's, uh, it's high levels. Yeah, okay? very high levels. So, and since then, I have bought a real, I, I no longer take my shoes, I take my shoes off. I have a yeah. really good walk-off mat at, at all my doors. You've got the thing where you can sit on and, and take And I got, I got my and, bench, I got my yeah. rack for the shoes. Nobody wears their shoes yeah. in my house. And I did the test again. Yeah. Same, same spot. Yeah. Came back with 64 yeah. micrograms per square meter. So I dropped it 40 micrograms. So that's wow. what you can do. That's a pretty easy yeah. fix to bring the lead, lead dust down in your house. Now, that's just the stuff you see in your carpet. Yeah. It's the fine particles. So if you look in the sunlight and you see those little particles floating around, yeah. those are the ones that are really dangerous. Because they're acting like a gas and they're so small. Remember the particles when they cut in half and cut in half? Yeah. They're so small that they can pick up all those toxins, our carcinogens, and then you inhale them. Our lungs are really precious. You know, they're not real sexy. You yeah. know, they're not, really, but they're <laughs> amazingly precious. Yeah. You know, if you can't breathe, I had my first asthma attack when I turned 50. Wow. And what I was, I wanted to wake up in the Caribbean on my 50th birthday on a beach, and I did. And it was love. Open the doors. They got the nice white sand, the blue water, and then some dogs came. I was in seventh heaven. Yeah. Okay. And I was, and I loved to snorkel. So I went out 
and I snorkel, and I'm a really strong swimmer. All of a sudden, I couldn't breathe. I was like, <gasps> I was struggling, and I finally got myself to a buoy and hung on for what like felt like hours, huh. till I could catch my breath. Yeah, and that was my first asthma attack. And what was the cause of that? I we think maybe the snorkel and the confined breathing or the humidity or something. It, you know, who knows. But what sets me off now is wood smoke, cigarette smoke, perfumes, particulates especially. So I can't be around a lot of dust or wood smoke. Hmm. I just, all of a sudden, I can't breathe, and it's really scary. So it's safe to say that that the example that you had from your house is, uh, oh, and also I was, okay, two things. So so first, that, that mic, you know, that minuscule, right. like, barely seeable mm -hmm. stuff that's in the air. Uh we talked about the child's like lungs and uh -huh. their systems being so delicate and everything, right. and that's like, yep. and also once you get over a certain age too, it's you're equally like delicate and well, stuff. Well, what they what they'll find, especially with children, is that little boys tend to grow out of asthma, little girls girls tend to grow into asthma, and women around menopause are developing asthma. So there could be a hormonal component. Now, asthma is a chronic disease. There are some hereditary considerations with it. Nobody in my family ever had asthma, but I also was a smoker. Yeah. Farmer smoker, I'm one of your worst nightmares yeah. now when it comes Me to Me too. Smoking. I've got eight years without smoking. I just, <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, all right. Yeah. That's great. But um it's we you know, the the dust so what we what they're finding in, in household dust not only is lead and arsenic, yeah. but they're also finding a lot of flame retardants, especially on the on the front of your computer screens. Because as the the computer's warming yeah. up, it's burning them off. And they're, they're collecting there. So here we have our kids. We're on our computer. The kid's on our lap, and we're tipping yeah. away, and they're being exposed to all this stuff. So it's just one of the – oh, I have a friend, a good friend, <laughs> Steve Gilbert. You you should have him. He's going to be on the show. He's good. been on it before. He's going to be on, good. like, next month. <laughs> good. So – and he has his yeah. – his he has a granddaughter, and his, her, her first words were wash. Wow. Because when he comes, you wash yeah. your hands, wash, wash, wash. You wash before you eat. I've yeah. actually gotten much better about washing my hands. Yeah. And I have not nearly gotten as sick this year as I have in the past. Yeah. You know, so like when I travel, um, and I have done a lot of flying all over the country doing trainings. I'm a national trainer and yeah. all sorts of different programs. Um, and I think the biggest culprit on the planes are the tray tables. Mm. They never wash those. Nah. So I cover them with yeah. paper towel. <laughs> And Those I, are like the uh, top, uh, what's the top blanket on the hotel bed? Yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. and we don't, don't go to bed bugs. Yeah, yeah. Don't go to bed bugs. I know <laughs> too much about bed bugs. Show. Oh, that's a whole other show. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to ask, uh, ask one question, then we're okay. going to take a little break here. Okay. Uh, so give us a little uh, insight onto the solution or control or elimination of dust. You want to damp dust at least once a week. So, and depending on what kind of heating system you have, if you have electric baseboard or wall heaters, you might, before you start them up in the in the fall, make sure you vacuum them off. Take the cup, turn the power off at the at the panel, okay? Mm. <laughs> Take the cover off and vacuum them out because you don't want to be breathing that burnt dust, okay? Then, if you have any kind of a forced air system, you want to make sure that if your furnace is over the over five years old, it gets serviced every year in the fall before you use it. You use a really good, high-quality furnace filter. So if you only have a one-inch space for one-inch spot, use a pleated paper filter. Those blue fiberglass ones that the, that the, the guys give you when they come in service are only yeah. good for... Small birds can fly through those things, okay? They do nothing for you. For like or, three for a buck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you, you got to spend like 20 bucks for a good filter, yeah. and your lungs are worth it. Yeah. Okay, and then make sure that you damp dust. You know, you damp dust, not wet, just damp, lightly damp dust. No feather dusters; it just blows the that stuff. That just makes around. it worse. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, so keep it, keep the, keep the dust down. You know, and also taking your shoes off at the door, it keeps your house a lot cleaner. Yeah. Of course, I have a dog, a cat, and a bunny, so I have other challenges. Yeah, a lot of main, <laughs> a lot of maintenance there. <laughs> Well, great. So we're going to take a short break and we'll be back with the interview. You are listening to Greener Views. Gravity connects me to the earth, which connects me to people who connect me to myself more honestly. And gravity connects me to the crust, which connects to the leaves on the trees that make it possible to breathe. Like a hell 
moment. They would tell us that we don't know how we feel or how to connect with other people on the planet. Oh, if we only knew the power in each blue disillusion little. In the vision of one resides all destroy the individual, for this is critical. The self ain't everything, hands to grasp, to cling, to mask, material vastly shipwrecked beings. At last, release the greed amassed with capitalist tasks and contact. The mass communication is all we have. <laughs> okay, welcome back to episode 31 of Green Reviews. And Eileen Gagney from the American Lung Association of Washington. We had a just had a hip hop and grand old time chit chatting during the break. <laughs> um, so this is the point in the conversation where we learn about that which has made you the unique and special person that you are. We'll get away from a little bit of all that scary stuff that we were talking about before. Um, so who or what has had the greatest influence on your life so far? That would probably be my mother. Now, my mother is biologically my aunt. So when I was um, not quite three and my sister was not quite two, my parents and grandparents died. Mm. And she took us in and protected us from my evil grandmother. <laughs> but she's, she's my hero. When yeah. she turned 50, she went back to school, got her college degree, and got her MSW, wow. Master's in Social Work. And she has been um, just, she's my hero. She's my hero with that. In terms of this kind of work that I'm doing, probably John Roberts and Steve Gilbert wow. are probably my biggest, are my mentors. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John, because he was so passionate, we would go to meetings and he would drag a vacuum with him. <laughs> We'd go to group health to try and recruit, get some funding for a grant, and he'd be walking down the street with dragging a vacuum cleaner with him. Yeah. <laughs> but Steve and I have been really good friends for probably 12 years. And we, we actually teach a course together with a sustainable building advisors course. And we do the indoor environmental quality part of it. And we do this great sort of shtick together. And, and I get going and then he brings in the science and brings in the facts. And it's just great. Yeah, we have a great time. I never had the fortune of meeting uh, Dr. Doss. Yeah, I know. He's gone now. But, uh, <laughs> but Steve and I uh, yeah. saw him first speak at the training. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then he, he was one of the first... Uh, folks that we were fortunate yeah. enough to pin down for the, uh, the the original podcast and he's coming on next month good. again good, good, good. and uh you know he's he's an incredibly bright person and he's also extremely extremely sweet yeah, yeah, yeah. just like dan morris yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and he what, what's my my biggest thing with steve is even though he's a scientist through yeah. and through he makes science approachable and he yeah. loves the history of it. he yeah. loves throwing these facts out and you're just yeah. like Oh, you mean you think I'm scary? He could yeah. really scare you if he wanted to. Yeah, he's like a professor at the University yeah, of Washington, he's a, and he's a scientist. Professor. But you sit and you talk to him, and he doesn't. Mm -hmm. You nope. just feel like you're on his level, yep. even though he like yep. knows a lot more than you do. Yeah, he's he's brilliant. Yeah, he's I a think really he's brilliant. great guy. Um, great, yeah. Um, so, do you have a person? So I, I like the story about your aunt too. That's mm -hmm. really cool. Um, do you have a personal motto or mission statement for for Eileen's life? Oh, there's a great uh, quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson, and I can't remember the whole thing, but it's um, to make an impact on the world, to have taught a child or to grow a garden or something like this. It's, it's um, you know, I don't have children. So yeah. this for me is, and well, I love pets. I have lots yeah. of pets. <laughs> um, but for me, it is really educating folks about what they can do to protect their children because yeah. they are our future. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's probably the, the biggest thing. And to, to really, right now, enjoy my dog. I'm, I'm retraining my dog. <laughs> I adopted my dog from my sister who was going to kill her. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> I've rescued her from my sister. And it's been a very interesting experiment because she's, she was really trying. And, you know, and all of us, you know, we were pushing each other, just button heads. And I'm, all of a sudden I said, you know what? This dog just likes to have fun. So every time she starts acting up, I started singing, girls just like to have fun, you know, the, the song. And as soon as I had that shift, we've been getting along great. And she has come around tremendously. So really, it's just like this whole attitude adjustment going, okay, how do you make 
lemonade out of lemons. There you go. Okay. And at that point, uh, Michael can put a picture of uh, Cindy Lauper or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's anyhow. Right. So that so yeah, fun. I love it. So so uh, what do you see as the main responsibility we have to ourselves during our lifetime? Oh, just let's just try and make this place a better place to live. You know, I mean, we've we've screwed it up so badly, and we need to protect it. It's there's you know the earth is a closed system. Yeah. Whatever we put in it stays in it. It doesn't go away, folks. Yeah. It's here, and for example. Lake Ozette on the peninsula, the fish there are so toxic, they have more mercury in them than any other fish in anywhere in this country. Wow. Because of all the pollution coming over from China. Huh. All the mercury from the coal-fired plants. Wow. And here in this state, we're shutting down our coal-fired plant, and guess where we're, we're going to be <laughs> shipping the coal? To China! Yeah. <laughs> it's like, really? I mean... <laughs> You know, it's it's not just us. It's it's all of us. Yeah. We are one family, and we're this is one planet, and we yeah. only have so much of it. So yeah, our, our, this is a very precious resource, and we really need to protect it. But God blesses America. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, so uh, how about? Uh, well, I think that pretty much uh, answers the next question. Uh, so, what can a person do that is most likely to have the most positive impact in life? Oh, jeez. Huh. I can give you a number of things. I think it really How depends. How about one? <laughs> one thing off the top of your head. Get, keep a healthy home for your children. Keep, keep a home that is um, safe from toxins that are known and unknown. And, yeah, I mean, we can do that. This is easy stuff. Taking your shoes off the door is really easy. You know, installing a high-quality walk-off mat at the front door to to get your dog's feet <laughs> would be would be pretty easy. Um, opening up windows is pretty easy, and all of these are cheap. They don't cost money. The walk-off mat might cost some money, yeah. But taking your shoes off is free. Doing this is free. Not buying all these chemicals is cheap. It'll save you money. Baking soda and vinegar are really cheap. Mm. You know, so just keep it simple. Keep it simple and everything in moderation. Great. Well, before we wrap it up, let's take care of some of the logistics. Uh, what type of support? Uh, let's we're, we'll get into the uh, so the programs that you got over there. Uh, mm -hmm. What type of support do you seek from those of us in the community, and uh, what's the best way for people to check check those things out? Well, so in terms of support, if you live in the city of Seattle, we need to to do at least 175 home assessments this year in order to meet our grant deliverables for the city. So referrals to us for home assessments. If you'd love a home assessment, we'd love to come give you a home assessment. It if you have an apartment, it takes about an hour. A home, depending on how how big it is, an hour, an hour and a half. And we work with you to come up with three things that are low cost and no cost. Uh, we also have got to do about 35 health fairs. Um, and then I do a lot of work with tenant advocacy. So if you're ha if you're renting and you have issues with your landlord, I'm here to help. I've actually gone to court and testified on the behalf of tenants, mm. and gotten a number of tenants um, released from their leases due to uh, major code violations, um, and have actually worked very. I'm working with the city and with DPD, which is the Department of Planning and Development, to come up with. Um, we actually do a cross-referral basis. So, for example, in the city of Seattle, if you have mold, they can't deal with mold. If you have an active water leak, they can deal with that. Mm. But mold is a symptom of too much moisture. That's where we come in to work with the homeowner or the renter to figure out how to make their home healthier. So what about, uh, let's see, so contact information, uh, phone okay. number, email address, okay. web links? So our web is www.alaw.org. My personal email is agagney, so that's A-G-A-G-N-E-Y at alaw.org. My phone number is 206-512-3280, and that's my direct line. Um, we are located, we have a new office at 822 John Street in mm. down in sort of the South Lake Union where, where Whole Foods is and Amazon is taking over yeah. <laughs> down in that neighborhood, um, which is really nice. It's more on the north side of Denny Park, which is great. Um, I actually have a door, I have an office with a door. 
which is really nice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we're great. We're, we're good to go. And anyway, you know, if you want to make a donation or if you want to come walk with us or ride with us or run with us, we'd love to have you join us. Great. So uh, we generally think at least a couple of weeks out because at least it takes us a week or so to get <laughs> the episode up. Are there any uh, specific uh, – I know that there's a lot of them. Is there any one that really uh, – you know, that you hold near and dear events, maybe several weeks or so out. Uh, That's the, that would be the run, walk, the the run, walk, walk, okay. walk, run, whatever it's called yeah. on May 6th, which I think is a, it's a Sunday on May, May 6th. May 6th, so yeah. that's coming up, it's yeah. A, it's a, but yeah, and it's great. It's at Magnuson. You can bring your dog, your kids, your friends, whomever. But it's, you know, Magnuson, if you've never been there, is an amazing park. Yeah. It's just lovely. I go there every day with my dog and runner. Oh, yeah, that's a great, uh, yeah, great little dog park over there. I haven't been there good, for a while. But... Good for my head, too. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, and lastly, do you have any wise advice, uh, helpful hints, or uh, final words you want to leave us with? I don't mean to scare people, but I want to inform them. Yeah. <laughs> okay? And I know some of the stuff I said tonight is scary, and it's, there's a lot to think about, but there's also stuff that's really easy and simple that you can do. So, you know, if you can start taking your shoes off, that's great. If you can, you know, un unplug those air fresheners, that's even better. <laughs> so... You know, just, just whatever you can do to make your home just healthy. Mm. You know, we spend a lot of time at home, you know, and it should be our haven. It should be our, 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 our you know, our, our, our respite, and it shouldn't be making us sick. Yeah, I just wanted to say I wanted to uh, touch on really quick. Uh, so I, I've known Eileen for several years now and uh, have been a part of through the people that we've had on this podcast and everything. Um Every time I went to these classes and these trainings and heard all this information, it would be like, oh, my goodness. But uh, <laughs> the one thing that I do know, that the people that are involved in not only the training and educating, but the actual work uh, of the, the actual work of changing this and, and uh, you know, operating their businesses in different manners and stuff, they really, really are positive and productive and, and, and hopeful people. Mm -hmm. So it isn't... Uh, it, it can seem a little doomy and gloomy sometimes, <laughs> but the people that I know that, that I know personally that are involved in it aren't like that at all. So that's really cool. We're all working to to change things for the better. That's the bottom line. Great. So yeah, so uh, you've been listening to episode thirty one of Green Reviews, and we'd like to thank Eileen Gagney for joining us. We love you and hope you enjoyed you. yourself. You bet, loved it. On our next show, we'll talk with Terry Phelan from Living Shelter Design. On behalf of myself, Daryl Whalen, and our crew, our posse, <laughs> Randy Parcell and Michael Schwartz, we'd like to say a heartfelt thank you to everyone who's listening. Uh, special consideration goes out to Ambrosia digitalmedia.com <laughs> and uh, music for this and every episode is provided with permission by John Henry Scully, Dan Fagens and J.D. Hobson uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on ideal guests and topics for the show email info at greenreviews.net or call 206-650-4587 uh, check out greenreviews.net and youtube.com slash greenerviews. Greenerviews is part of the Healthy Homecast Network, so please go check out the other like-minded podcasts and businesses over at healthyhomecast.com. Thank you to everyone who has made this podcast possible. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Greenerviews is part of the Healthy Homecast Network. Check out all their conscientious and sustainably focused podcast programs and businesses at HealthyHomecast.com. Greener Views is created, developed, and produced by Daryl Whalen. Our audio engineer is Randy Parcell. Our video producer is Michael Schwartz of AmbrosiaDigitalMedia.com. Music for this episode was provided by SlapJazz.com, DanFagens.BandCamp.com, and JDHobson.com. Your feedback is important. Please feel free to contact us with any comments or questions, including suggestions for guests and program topics. You can call us at 206-650-4587 or send a direct email to info at greenerviews.net. Be sure to check back often. New episodes coming soon.